What is up homies, welcome back to another review from Heroes Reforged. Today we are reviewing Black Panther Wakanda Forever, the closing chapter of Marvel Studios Phase 4. We're gonna talk about non-spoilers first, give you our initial reactions on this movie, and then we will get into the spoilers uh, a little bit later. But before we get into the reaction, if you wanna see the uncut reactions for all the shows that we've been watching, including all the stuff from Marvel Studios, some DC shows, The Boys, we just started season three. We're doing X-Men, the animated series as well. Check that out on Patreon, patreon.com slash Heroes Reforged. If you haven't subscribed yet, yes, Hector? I was just, no, go ahead and finish that lovely <laughs> thought, Adam. If, 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 you, guys, you, haven't if you haven't subscribed yet. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button, turn the red button black or the black button white or gray, gray or whatever or color whatever. it is. Whatever, yeah. Hit the bell for notifications. We're almost at 100,000 subscribers, so help us get there. We do have something fun planned for 100K, so mm -hmm. the sooner we get there, yeah. the sooner we can do it. Also mm -hmm. wanted to say, be sure to head over to our Discord. If oh, you yes. feel like maybe Twitter's falling apart, come join a pretty mm -hmm. cool community <laughs> over on Discord. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. free to join, but it's also, uh, if you're a member of our uh, Patreon, you get a bunch of cool little extra clubhouses in there that you can chat with really, it's a dope community with really cool people. Yeah. So come and check that out. The link for that is in the description below. The other thing mm -hmm. I want to point out is, Adam, you said, before we get into the reaction, be sure to check out all the uncut reaction we're so used to doing reactions this is a <laughs> this is a review <laughs> this is a review uh -huh. video but i i did want to say that um uh we do have some awesome stuff that we have been watching and recording ourselves watching and putting it online for you guys on patreon and on yep. youtube if at some point we've talked about this if at some point you guys would be interested because we've been covering marvel phase for the disney plus side since the beginning since wandavision and we've had this discussion before if you guys were interested maybe at some point we could go back and fill in some of those gaps of movies we've already seen, but just kind of rewatch mm -hmm. them, get a re-reaction to them. This I'm might talking surprise people, but I don't rewatch a lot of the MCU movies. That's what I'm no. saying. Mm -hmm. And this may also not surprise people, but I have a lot of those in 3D. So maybe I could bring them over mm -hmm. to y'all's place and we could do a little 3D <laughs> setup and everything. So if you guys would like yeah. to see that at some point so we can get the complete phase four from Heroes Reforged, let us know in the comments below and then maybe we can get mm -hmm. into that. So that could we're be fun. Because yeah. I, would, I would love to rewatch Wakanda forever with you guys and and talk about it as we're watching it and mm -hmm. you know it'd be great in i think that would be great i think that would be fun <laughs> hector you and i got a chance to see this movie twice now so we're coming in with like i don't know twice as much of the experience i guess augustine you got to go with us well yeah. we all went yesterday really yeah. cool screening put on by cinemark and straw hat goofy it was a lot of fun it was a really cool yeah. event i will say huge shout out to him by the way so thank you to him for for Thanks. inviting us to this because otherwise yeah. i wouldn't have seen the movie until thursday and, and then we never this been whole able thing would have been this off schedule hector's going yeah. out of the country Country, so it's like perfect <laughs> right. scenario. I'm, I'm flying yeah, to yeah, Wakanda. Yeah. I gotta go home to <laughs> movie again in Wakanda. In Wakanda, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to Talokan, so I'm gonna go. Yeah, see yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. The one Beautiful. thing that I that, I that I that I do want to say yeah. is the experiences of watching these movies twice in two very different crowds was so unique because mm. the first time that Hector and I watched it, we watched it at pretty much a press screening. So mm -hmm. you know, you're sitting around mm -hmm. people. They're sitting there. They're kind of just absorbing the movie person next to me the journalist was taking notes which i'm like i don't even know mm -hmm. how you do that i know some other people do <laughs> right. that like eric voss does that right i don't know how people do that in the dark anyway Couldn't yesterday be last night screening you could feel the energy in that room anytime something cool that in the first screening i was reacting to not out loud yes. but internally people were reacting to like okay cool mm -hmm. i i'm i'm getting the the movies giving me sort of like the right feeling in all these great mm -hmm. moments so yeah that was that was really really fun and kind of the only way i want to experience movies i feel like but whatever it was With still a really crowds, good time yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. Especially, especially for movies yeah. like this so i think it just it goes into our discussion of it which is like the the theater that you're in can just vastly shape your experience with absolutely. a movie like this Same you know way, so like, like when we watch stuff together so yeah. if absolutely so if you can and you're fortunate enough and you can safely go to a theater this weekend or it just came out right this is coming out monday is that the plan mm -hmm. if you had a chance to go see it great if you have a chance to go see it again <laughs> you know i i think that we're just huge fans of the theater experience even though we love yeah. the stuff that's streaming all the time there's something really special to it and it, and if especially for this film it adds to it if you get to go to whim you know i'm talking to an audience right now they probably saw it opening night so they know what i'm talking about so. yeah oh yeah most yeah. of the people who are watching this now definitely saw it with the hypest crowds opening yeah. night for sure i yeah. think the excitement for this movie everybody that I, that i so i posted the the story that i was at the screening on instagram and i got so many people saying i can't wait i can't wait i can't uh, wait and the hype levels for this movie i think across the board are really really high it's going to be interesting to see the reaction to this movie because because when I walked out of this movie, I heard one guy behind me go, well, that was a movie. And I was like, huh? 
Like what? What? <laughs> you know so what? I changed was, my mind. There was I take it back. people that in that crowd, crowd last night. Terrible crowd. That crowd last <laughs> no, night. No, no, awful no. Crowd. That's the thing. Ninety nine percent of the crowd was yeah. super hyped and cheering and everything. And yeah. I did. I think Straw Hat Goofy did a good job of hyping up the crowd with doing those giveaways and things at the very beginning. That was great. Sure. Like making sure people were excited and making sure he made it a really fun event. I think lended to the excitement that people were feeling, which is not to take away from the movie at all, uh, because the movie had some really really cool moments. But let's get into some non spoilies initial thoughts yeah. anybody got anything like right off the bat that you got to say or or you guys I, that have seen it twice like yeah what what are your I, impressions i turned to our pal naeem who we got to see the movie with last night mm -hmm. loves black panther looks exactly mm -hmm. like chadwick boseman has been told oh, yeah. that since yeah. 2016 since yeah. for years um <laughs> yeah and he he was really saying like i need time to process it there was so much in that movie and i was like yeah but yeah. he had a great time yeah. and i turned to him as soon as it was done and i said i like this movie more the second time it really mm -hmm. benefits from watching it twice mm -hmm. my initial takeaway is i love this film i don't know if it's it's not my favorite mcu movie but this movie had to do so much and it did it honestly and emotionally while also doing the superhero explosion-y stuff that Marvel can kind of do really well. And on that side of it, I was very entertained with Namor and that, and mm -hmm. that entire storyline and the, the threat of what the characters in Wakanda have to deal with. Solid. But the thing that I think that the three of us as like fans of the first film, fans of Ryan Coogler, fans of, of, of his filmmaking and his just, just a brilliant way that he puts movies like this together... I mean, we love Creed. We always talk about how much we cry when we watch Creed. Mm -hmm. Then I don't think that we were expecting that the movie wouldn't be able to hit the emotion that it did because it mm -hmm. was going to be commenting on the fact that we lost Chadwick Boseman. But I feel right. like I'm still surprised at how actually beautifully emotional it was. Does that make sense? Like mm -hmm. I knew going mm -hmm. into it, I'm like, this is going to be, you know, get our tissues ready. This is going to be so sad. We're going to, we're going to be moved. But then certain moments in the movie, I was so surprised that they were able to like pull off and that they did. And it felt real. Mm -hmm. And and frankly, yeah. those are the best things about the movie. The Namor stuff is awesome. And I love Tenoch Huerta and the whole cast of the, the people playing characters from Thalokan, but the, the the movie really soars when it is these quiet moments between characters. Mm -hmm. So that's my initial non-spoiler yeah. review. Really love the movie. Yeah. Unlike any other Marvel movie, it's a movie that I think, you know, it 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 it's doing just so, so much. And I think it's going to benefit from kind of revisiting. And I'm so mm -hmm. glad that they made it. And I'm so glad that this is the direction they went in. And I'm so happy that it's a part of the MCU. And I'm going to be able to, you know, mm -hmm. include it in that in that franchise uh forever because it's a it's a gem it's a great film in the series absolutely mm -hmm. yeah yeah Adam. i think the movie had like so like you were saying so many things that had to do it had to deal with the passing of chadwick boseman in real life therefore it has to deal with the passing of the character of t'challa in the movie it's introducing talokan and and namor and all the all the people of talokan as well so it's doing doing quite a bit I think the thing that I really actually liked about the movie is the fact that it didn't try to shoehorn in some other third party villain. And I right. think sometimes superhero movies yep. where you're dealing with characters that eventually end up on the same side, you feel this mm -hmm. obligation to put in a real quote unquote villain into the story to really sort of make the stakes higher. And I Black like Adam. the fact, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think, I mean, I think truthfully, yeah. throw, and, 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 <laughs> sorry, sorry. A lot, of, a lot of superhero movies are kind of, uh, are guilty of that. And I appreciate yeah. that this movie just said, nope, it's not going to be anything else other than Wakanda and Talokan right. and those right. two people, those two factions dealing with one another. And I like the way that they set it up. You know, yeah. you have these third party sort of things happening that that caused this war to happen, but it's not really part of the story. It's really focused on these two groups of people and mm -hmm. showing their different perspectives because you look at Namor and the way it's set up, there's a lot of justification for why he feels the way he feels. So I like that it really focuses on the character work. There are, some, there are definitely some things in the movie that I think maybe could have hit a little bit better, maybe could have been a little bit stronger. Mm -hmm. But I was just really impressed with the film just as a movie, not even as like a mm -hmm. superhero movie, not even as like a Black Panther film, just yeah. as a movie about characters who are undergoing or going through a lot of heartbreak, dealing with loss, dealing with grief, how they have to overcome that grief, the things that they sometimes have to sacrifice in order to get through those things. So mm -hmm. I just thought it was just like a really good character piece. And some of the acting yeah. in this movie, especially from actors like Denai Guerrera, Angela oh. Bassett, Lupita Nyong'o was like unbelievably good. Yes. Like the emotional yes. stuff mm -hmm. hits so hard. They have so much strength on screen. They have so much power and you feel mm -hmm. that power coming through. And it was yep. 
really hard to, to, it was impossible to not be engaged with those actors when they're on screen delivering lines. And it's not, and then, and that's not even what they're doing. They're really selling you on a performance. And I think that's what, Mm -hmm. I think that's what was like the biggest takeaway for me outside of all the action, which I thought was awesome. I thought a lot of the Mm -hmm. action stuff worked incredibly well, Mm -hmm. but I also just thought that the, the design of the worlds, you know, we, we've seen Wakanda before, but I think even, you know, I think in what it's five, six years ahead now, Mm -hmm, we've seen a little bit more of Wakanda, a little bit of a different take on Wakanda. Some things have been expanded, but then you see, yeah, then you see Talokan and that's just like a massively vast underwater world. And when you're doing underwater stuff, there's always a challenge, especially now when we have Avatar coming out, it's you're looking and seeing like, well, how has the technology advanced enough? We've had Aquaman. How are all these things Mm -hmm. doing it differently? And I think all three of those whether it's Aquaman, Black Panther, or Avatar, they're all doing it a little bit differently, but I think each of them mm-hmm. look really cool in the context mm-hmm. of their story. Yeah. So I really enjoyed that stuff quite a bit. And I thought the music, especially by Ludwig Göransson and Ooh. all of, like the music mm-hmm. they had yeah. throughout the film worked incredibly yeah. well too. So outside of it being a Marvel movie, I just thought it was a really great film. And I love the fact that yes, there are, th- there are th- a few things that happen that could have bigger ramifications for the future of the MCU, but sure. it is really focused on just being about Wakanda mm-hmm. Talokan, those characters, like that's the primary focus. There's no like, this movie is all about setting up secret wars or da da da, you know, whatever. Right. I like right. that it's very much self contained. And I don't think this is a spoiler, but even some of the things that we see in the post credit, it's, it's really self contained. Like it's just about yeah. Black mm-hmm. Panther's universe. And I love yeah. that so much. And ultimately, even after the second time, I liked it as much, if not a little bit more. Um, Mm -hmm. But I thought it was pretty solid all the way through. I think Angela Bassett should get an Oscar nomination for Best Supporting Actor. She She was so good. My God. Powerhouse performance. Yeah. The emotion Uh, coming through. Incredible. You really felt that she was grieving the entire movie, too, because it was it was it was really, really, really good the way she performed that entire role. Uh, My initial thoughts are that this movie is very different from I'm just going to go to Black Panther one. This movie is was created at a very different time. Uh, To me, it was very apparent that there was a lot of sadness and grief and anger when this movie was created because I as as much as you know the the Marvel universe is, is is what we are kind of focused on. I couldn't help but think of Ryan Coogler writing this movie as he as he was going through this process, right? So to me, it felt more like a personal, uh, like Ryan Coogler working through his issues because this movie had a lot to do with grief, anger, revenge, bar- like all the stages of grief are there in the writing and in the tone of the movie, but also within the characters. Everybody's going through it in a whole different way. And Chadwick Boseman permeates from the first frame all the way to the last frame. Like yeah. you can feel yeah. his presence throughout the entire movie. That's not an exaggeration. That's a hundred percent fact. It's yeah. right. And so like, it's this movie, it's, there were moments in it where I was like, man, I wish, I, I wish he wouldn't have done that. But then I was like, oh, this is why he did this one thing. And I get it. <laughs> like it's, it's, it's going through, like there are characters who make decisions in this movie where I was like, they're being blinded by their anger or they're being blinded by their grief. Like I wish they wouldn't have done that, but that's all part of like the grieving process and so i think this movie adds to the um kind of the i I would call it the new age of marvel storytelling where it's not and things that we've seen in the past where it's like the big bombastic like yeah there was a final battle here right but it's not like the big bombastic like oh defeat the villain and we're done everybody's happy at the end of the day this Mm -hmm. movie was a lot more nuanced where like she hulk didn't have that huge bombastic fight at the end it was more about how are the characters going to resolve this and how are we going to move on from this point um and so there was a there was a lot of that going on um on on the story t- i'm sorry on the filming uh part on the vfx and everything ryan cooler is so good that i didn't ha- i had zero doubts that this was going to hit zero worries on on that part it's just about um i think hector you told me last night um that there there was a moment at comic-con where he said i felt chadwick's hand on my shoulders i was writing this movie and i feel like that was very apparent in the overall tone of the movie so i think people should just go in like i know the hype is is up there really really high but i yeah. think Going in and realizing where these filmmakers and these actors like imagine imagine being the actor and having to recreate a funeral scene with your friend, you know, like that kind of stuff is is really, really difficult to to Mm -hmm. go through emotionally because it's real Mm -hmm. emotions. 
I think this movie is um, is a very personal movie to Ryan Coogler. I could be wrong. I could be all speculation, but that's what I saw. And that's what I noticed from this movie. But um, I feel like it's time to go into spoiler territory, you guys, and really like you might get, right. in, get into the nitty gritty. <laughs> all right, let's do it. Spoilers. You've been forewarned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you haven't seen the movie yet, this is a perfect place to stop. Bookmark the page. Go see the movie and then come back and watch the rest yeah. of this because we're going to get into yeah. it. What is the first spoiler that you want to ruin, Hector? <laughs> I, <laughs> there, uh, you know what's funny is that like there's a good amount, but there's yeah. not too many that are like, like uh, oh, they set this up and it's going right. to be this in mm-hmm. the MCU because mm-hmm. it's like you guys are saying it's so self-contained for the Black Panther story. Man, I, think- I like that. And there was a moment where you and I were at the first mm-hmm. screening and they were talking yeah. about, you know, a character who builds the machine that can detect yeah. vibranium. And Hector right. looked at me, he goes, Dr. Doom, Dr. Doom. And then they say, like, it's an American. And I go in, Reed Richards, Reed Richards. And then literally 30 seconds later, they're like, oh, thank, it's an MIT God. student. And we're like, oh, it's Riri yeah. Williams. Okay. Oh, thank Riri. God yeah. we were wrong. Thank yeah. God. Yeah. yeah. And the, yeah. the inclusion of Riri Williams felt so essential to the story. It did not feel like a force, like, okay, there's going to be an Ironheart character, an Ironheart show. Mm-hmm. Ryan Coogler's producing the Ironheart show, so let's introduce her here. It felt like that continuation of they introduced T'Challa in Captain America Civil War, and now here's Ryan Coogler, and he's mentioned it time and time again that like he was at a screening in LA when the first Iron Man mm-hmm. debuted. He was mm-hmm. a film student, and now he is able to, as the person who is shepherding the Black Panther Wakanda side of the MCU, He's able to be like, here's the next generation of Iron Man. And I loved the way that that character was depicted. She was a crowd mm-hmm. favorite. She was, mm-hmm. it was awesome to see her. She was funny. Just, it was, she it was. was funny. It was great. <laughs> yeah. And I yeah. think that there's still enough little storytelling seeds that are going to pay off in her show yeah. that the movie will be like a fun rewatch that you'll get, you know, bonus. Mm-hmm. Uh, for example, I'll say this. I, I, I didn't think that they would ever do it, but after watching the movie Wakanda Forever, I'm like, they might bring back Robert Downey Jr. in the role of an AI, like mm-hmm. Tony Stark is the AI voice and hologram for Riri in the comics. Because mm-hmm. when they hear the AI in the uh, garage. Uh, Riri's like, what's that? And Shuri's like, it's my AI. And I'm like, why did they pause and have Riri ask that question? Mm-hmm. If not right. to plant a seed in her mind of like, oh, you can do that. I can do that. Can mm-hmm. I, can you guys yeah. share how, what's your algorithm, the Wakandan AI algorithm? I'll borrow mm-hmm. some of that, but then I'll put my own. And now here's my AI that's going to be in a show or movie going forward. Those mm-hmm. kinds yeah. of things are yeah. there, but they do not detract from, in my mind, from the story. Yeah. I don't think that it's a bad thing. In fact, I thought it was quite a good thing that the, yeah. uh, the Countess Valentina de Fontaine was in the film. That was a surprise. The audience really yeah, reacted yeah. to that. Much a surprise. No, yeah. no clue that was going to be there and, and, and no not just even more so that she yeah. was married to every exactly. K Ross. <laughs> I think, that was crazy. I think it was that great. Was crazy. And that I think, was crazy. I think going forward, I think that it's like, I'm like, I have, I, I could put money down that she is a scroll from her first mm. introduction in the Falcon and the Winter Soldier show. I'm like, everything that she's oh. doing, I'm like, I would not be surprised because that was her, that she was one of the scrolls in the comics. And mm-hmm. I think that the way that she's acting, and it'd be so funny if they brought back uh, Julia Louis Dreyfus, after revealing mm-hmm. that the character she's been playing is a scroll, and she comes back and she's like, "I'm still married to Ross. What's going on? What do you mean we're not married yeah. anymore? Like th- that's <laughs> yeah, yeah, how yeah. long? Do you know what I mean? That like because maybe they got a divorce because she was a scroll, and she goes, "I need to be separate and be in a position mm-hmm. of power in certain places to be able to pull strings and blah 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 blah. Those yeah. things are all there, but it does not take away from the film. The other spoiler I want to get into is that like the big thing behind Namor's inclusion has to deal with vibranium. Mm-hmm. The entire right. Uh, uh, creation and genesis of Thalokan comes from vibranium plants underwater near the 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 sort of Gulf of Mexico kind of uh, mm-hmm. part of the mm-hmm. world. And um, first first time viewing, there was a part of me that was like, oh, this is a spinoff of Wakanda. And I felt like maybe there's a, a world where I would have been uh, excited if Thalokan and Namor and the sort of like Mesoamerican and Latino and Mexican characters had their own thing, had their own sort of like mm-hmm. special, you know, cause like Wolverine gets adamantium, Wakanda has mm-hmm. vibranium, you know, like, like uh, certain characters have certain little, like the red skull is always dealing with the cosmic cube. And then that turned into mm-hmm. the Tesseract and Loki and so on and so forth. The, the Thanos with the infinity gems, stones. Right. And I was like, maybe it would have been cool if they had their own thing. But then again, I think it's a great shorthand. I think it's a great way to, to get audiences to understand how that, that group of people could have been changed with vibranium, the same way that the mm-hmm. heart shaped herb changes the black Panther. And I also think that 
I kept thinking about the movie and I was like, again, this is Ryan Coogler inviting Latinos to mm -hmm. the party, to the table. And I think right. that this movie, and Augustine, I want you to get into this because you this kind of goes mm -hmm. into what you were telling me a little bit last night. But like basically I'll say this: like Latinos and the black community uh are together in a lot of things, and they can be together in even more things. Like there's mm -hmm. a lot of issues with black racism in the Latino community, in mm -hmm. certain cultures and countries and stuff. And yeah. I have witnessed some of that, being that my family is from Mexico. I have seen some of that sort of like culture. I mean, you want to talk about like colorism in Mexican television. Benel Huerta mm -hmm. has talked about this before. They don't they yeah. don't as often cast indigenous Mexican people, very brown people. They cast lighter mm -hmm. skin or Spanish European people. And yeah. that also applies to like, of course there are black Latinos and there are black people that are like live in Mexico and live in those parts of the world. I feel like they don't get as much representation. That demographic isn't as often included in the discussions of here's what we're talking about with Latinos or here's what we're talking about black community, black people, right. that kind of, right. you know, which is another reason I love the inclusion of Haiti in this mm -hmm. film, the country of that. It, that's exactly what this is. I think that, that Talocan can end up being this great metaphorical bridge between mm -hmm. the community. So all I'm saying is like, you know, Latinos, I think they showed up for Black Panther one. They were they were there, the the, you know, and that was an amazing party. And I am certain that Latinos are gonna show up. I hope they're they're, they're gonna show up for Black Panther two. And yeah. to just think about like where this movie ends, you want to get into spoilers. Namor going, now the most powerful person in the most powerful nation on the earth has sympathy for Talokan. And mm -hmm. he was saying, and the surface world is gonna come for Wakanda. And when they do, mm -hmm. we will be there and we will be more yeah. powerful than ever. And I was like, yeah. I feel like this is again, it's Ryan Coogler talking about some of these issues at a, at that metaphorical level. I think yeah. let's just get into little spoilies. I think Black Panther 3 is gonna be Dr. Doom invades Wakanda. And I think Namor's <laughs> gonna show up and be like, yeah. you can't do that because this mm -hmm. is also part mm -hmm. of my tribe and vice versa. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's yeah. Great, but that also means that we had to deal with them fighting in this movie, Augustine. Right, right. And that was that was initially what I was not looking forward to. So I don't know. I think I said it in one of our reactions. I was like, I don't want to see the black and brown community fighting each other because that's right. I feel like it's a tired trope. Uh, black and brown people are usually the villains in whatever, you know, other movies that aren't, you know, as well thought out. And so to me, I was like, OK, I really don't want to see that happen. Then I saw it happening. And the fight scenes that were happening, there was a lot of people cheering and I get it a hundred percent people cheering for the people of Wakanda. And I was like, yes, I, I get it. And I had to put like my initial emotions back. I was like, wait, but there's like black and brown people <laughs> killing each other on screen and that's not good. Like they shouldn't be doing this initially. And I think that's, that's where I got the, um, the idea and, and the feeling that Ryan Coogler was kind of doing it on purpose because because it is kind of a tire trope and I know that he's he's uh more I guess a well versed or 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 I guess well aware, cultured aware. Than to just make yeah. that just like they're just fighting because they're dumb and blind and they don't know what they're doing all these decisions that are being made uh from the infiltration of Talocan by Nakia to uh you know or, uh, uh, Queen Ramonda making all these rash decisions because her family is dying in front of her her daughter is missing like all of these things it's completely understandable to see how all of that kind of spun off I thought there was some some plot points that were a little thin not necessarily like super well developed but I think I, the way I justify it is that there's a lot of acting on emotion happening from these major characters and that's mm -hmm. really when it got to the the point where I saw the the Talocan people and the Wakandans massacring each other, I was like, this is not supposed to be cheered for. Like, I don't think Ryan Coogler wanted us to cheer for any of those things that were happening because there was some yeah. tribalism happening. There was people in the audience cheering. And I was like, yeah, but come on, man. Like, <laughs> killing each other, bro. We should not we should like, not be killing each other over an oppressor, like coming in and potentially doing something, which was essentially right. what was happening. Like there was a war going on because potentially potential world power could come in and mess things up yeah and so yeah. to me uh the the redeeming moment was when in the final fight 
when he had uh, Tenoch, when he had Namor, Namor, I should say, uh, kind of making those connections of like, oh, we're the same people. I was like, okay, yeah. he gets it. Like Ryan Coogler gets it. We are all, you know, supposed to be on the same side here and we're and, supposed and, to be fighting and, the greater enemy. And Shuri was making those connections too. And it's a wonderful yeah. scene. Yeah. And I've seen, I've already, I know we can bring this up, but we, we know someone who has brought up the sort of like Martha moment from Batman versus Superman. Mm -hmm. which I think you can you can pick apart that moment in Batman versus Superman and talk about what works and what doesn't work. And people have been doing it for a long time now since that film came out. Mm -hmm. But for this particular moment, it is a combination of what Shuri is recalling and going through and the setup right. for that. The fact that, first of all, Michael B. Jordan showing up in the ancestral plane oh was my God, so wonderful. Dope. The audience. Also being, oh. instead of it being like a wise elder to Shuri yes. it's like yes. an angry like yes. uh you know yes. person who was slighted or who was done dirty yeah so and, that's and, crazy. and what I love what I love too is that even though I guess we have a semi-confirmation from the tv show Moon Knight that the ancestral plane is real because mm -hmm. uh uh Tiamat I believe like the the Egyptian goddess the hippo goddess yeah. she was like well there's she many different like afterlife planes and she goes oh the ancestral plane beautiful gorgeous mm -hmm. place and so I'm like I guess we get a confirmation that it's real but then what is real in Moon Knight but anyway the way that the ancestral plane works in Black Panther 1 and 2 is that it could also just be a sort of like hallucination from the character as they're going through it because it's what they need and the fact that Killmonger knew things that only Shuri would know but then again it's the ancestral plane so he he could probably have access to you know he knows what's been happening but yeah, he was yeah. like why did you summon me what do you need for me because right. Nakia was going like you know like she didn't uh, mother Ramonda she didn't like believe any of that stuff right but Nakia was hoping it was Ramonda but we didn't hear Shuri, who she wanted to like, she didn't say, I want right. to see my mom, you know, yeah. Shuri went into it and she was, she was angry because it's part of the yeah. grief. And, mm -hmm. and, and the fact that in the ancestral plane, she was like, I'm going to kill Namor. But then in that moment, it was almost like revisiting the ancestral plane because there's the queen and she goes, show them who you are. Chills. Mm -hmm. That's the moment. Mm -hmm. And, and Namor is also looking up at her and he's seeing his mother and he's seeing his right. people because when she's, when she's saying your people need you, yield mm -hmm. and you can you know it's the same as when t'challa said that to mbaku he was mm -hmm. like yield you're the mountain tribe needs you like you know that's that's the important thing and i think that kugler yeah. wanted us to cheer when they both showed up on the plane at the end yeah and absolutely. that's the moment and our audience yeah. kind of didn't cheer for that but in yeah but i was like yes like this is this is <laughs> yeah, you know, I know they, they yeah. that's what you should have been cheering that, damn it <laughs> right exactly that i think that's the moment he wanted to cheer but there was you know i yeah it, it was a very different audience you were saying augustine last night you were like i wonder how audiences are going to treat this because you picked yeah. up on all themes of grief and you felt it being very personal mm -hmm. from ryan cool and at the same time it is also very entertaining action-packed spy adventure movie from it's a yeah. marvel movie it's a big blockbuster and it's a crowd pleaser and yeah. the, uh, it is going to be interesting to see how people i mean if that person who walked out of the theater and they were like displeased with it is like i'm so curious just to know why is that yeah. person walking right. out and being uh the, the the themes of grief didn't didn't hit as hard it's like no that's 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 i doubt it it, it, it I, you know it's going to be interesting to see people talk about the movie and i guess mm -hmm. interesting in reading for this particular video down below what people right, are saying right i think that um i think that the movie was ultimately super successful and i mean the other the big spoiler thing we can talk about is the fact that that um i mean so many things are like spooky coincidences you know you go back to when paul walker died during the filming of furious seven it was not a huge shift for those filmmakers and for that team and those producers and those actors to all of a sudden make that movie about family mm -hmm. and the importance because the Fast and Furious franchise had been about family. It was not a pivot. Right. And I think in the same vein, when you watch the first Black Panther, they're already dealing with loss because T'Challa's coming in talking about how he, he lost his father, T'Chaka, yeah. mm -hmm. recently. And the the incredible supporting actors in that and film. And how sudden that death was, too, and unexpected. Right, right. Yeah. And so they already had things set up in the storytelling. You can see your loved ones in the ancestral plane. You, you know, we have this process to go through for when there's a new Black Panther. Like everything was set up and the supporting cast was so amazing. Angela Bassett and Danae Guerrera and uh, Lupita Nyong'o and uh, um, uh, Letitia Wright and, and Winston, Winston Duke. Duke. All these characters are, mm -hmm. are so good so that when this, this movie shifts its focus to being without Chadwick Boseman, without T'Challa, all of those other characters can absolutely, each one of them can lead their own movie. They all and stepped it, it up. Was a, they all stepped they all it up. Stepped yeah. it up. Letitia mm -hmm. Wright is, is 
a better actor in this film than frankly like because because of the circumstances everyone stepped mm -hmm. it up and mm -hmm. and everybody i think brings it and the other spooky stuff is that the movies post endgame have been dealing with the in universe blip where people were lost for five years and how the world has changed yeah. and then what do you know we all had to deal with and are still dealing with a global pandemic yeah. so there's this mm -hmm. spooky thing of like wandavision and all of these other projects and movies are dealing with loss and grief and and spider-man no way home deals with it and um mm -hmm. and, and so spider-man far from home dealt with it being the one after uh, uh end game that came out but it's mm -hmm. it's it's insane how much of that it was not a departure for the story to go down that route yeah. and um i think that the other really spooky thing is that with their in-universe five-year time jump and then the events of this film begin with the loss of King T'Challa that we kind of see, and then it goes one year later. So they're already in the year 2025, not in 2024, mm -hmm. but 20, tw like they're like, Is it, you, I 2024? It was 2024, but I could be wrong because it, because it goes from 2018, yeah. 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So 2023, like in the fall is what has been confirmed is when they bring everybody back. Mm -hmm. So from then, into like WandaVision and, and the show Loki and well, Loki's out of time, but all those other shows mm -hmm. like Shang-Chi is like, I think in the next spring yeah, and then the like Spider-Man's in Christmas. Next, so yeah, that would make yeah. sense. Yes. Yeah. So like maybe even into 2020, um, well, I'm saying the big opening of this movie may have yeah, been yeah, yeah. in 2024 Four. and then we jump a year later. So 2025, but either way, there's like seven years since Thanos blipped. And I think they're telling us it's been seven years since King T'Challa and Nakia had a child. And so in this mm. movie at the end, we get a seven-year-old. And it's not, mm -hmm. again, it's not like out of nowhere. It's not like they have to force a time jump to get right. that to work mm -hmm. organically. It's just in universe, it's working. And, and on I top think, of um, that, they're also yeah. setting up future there the marvel cinematic universe is sort of shifting into like a legacy where the, yes. the mantle's being passed to new characters. So it also yeah. feels mm -hmm. very natural for them to set up the heir to the throne that yes. could potentially take up the mantle of Black Panther once Shuri is ready to pass it on, which is like, right. absolutely right. That's 10 years saying that it just kind of worked out that way in a lot of ways. I, mm -hmm. I, I think that yeah. 10, 15 years from now, we really will see a Wakanda project that is a young Prince T'Challa. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're going to either use the same actor or a different actor, and they're going to tell a story of now. That kid was now, adorable. Now, yeah, so that kid cute. was great. And now, <laughs> now T'Challa is going to be the next Black Panther. And I think that that's another, I think that people were really concerned with like, um, when Chadwick passed and Marvel said, we're not going to recast him. I think people were concerned with mm -hmm. like, well, that doesn't make sense, especially people that have comic book brain. They go, that doesn't mm -hmm. make sense because Black Panther is such a pivotal Marvel character as important as Tony mm -hmm. Stark, Reed Richards, Spider-Man, Hulk, Wolverine, like, this is how important this character is. But I think that Marvel Studios knows how important this character and this world is. Oh, yeah. And absolutely. they have, in, yeah. they're, in, they're going to continue to invest. And I think yeah. the next movie will be Shuri as Black Panther. But then going forward, Shuri could be on in, in the Avengers. Shuri mm -hmm. could, like, it, I think it could be, it's going to be a long time with this character being Black Panther. And then eventually, yeah. I think they will do the T'Challa is going to be the new uh, Black Panther. But I can't imagine somebody going to see this movie that wanted T'Challa to be recast, then walking out of this movie and still feeling like that, feeling like that. Because I'm like, you're going to be able to get stories with Wakandan characters for years. Mm -hmm. And then at some point, there will be a new T'Challa that will be the son of the Chadwick Boseman version of the character, which is like this amazing. I got choked up watching that mid credit scene because Dude. that kid to me also, bro, me too. that kid to me also like represented how kids have grown up with black panther mm -hmm. that i hadn't even Absolutely. we've all we've all seen those amazing clips of little kids little black and brown kids just being so excited about the movie or when chadwick mm -hmm. boseman passed away like them like learning it and processing it and it's like mm -hmm. it was it was really really beautiful the mcu is here to stay they they are absolutely going to build out legacy characters yeah i feel like those are the major sort of spoilers that were that people that i did not see coming and yeah. that uh that that yeah. they could have repercussions for future stories but it, all of it dealt with i also want to point this out too adam i know you caught this augustine when you watch the movie again when ramonda goes to haiti to that school she says mm -hmm. bonjour she's saying 
Bonjour to Prince T'Challa. He's there. The mm-hmm. little, he, the, he, yeah. that, oh, that kid. I noticed that the second there. time. I noticed that the second time. Oh, who's playing he's soccer? One of the, yeah. Yes. Uh, he's one of the first, oh, time, first time I didn't clock that, yes. but the second time I was oh, like, dang. wait, I'm going to look and see if one of these kids because, is young T'Challa. And yeah, sure yeah, enough, yeah. it was. And, they, they, and they, they were very sneaky. They had Angela Bassett yeah. holding the hands of other kids but not mm-hmm. t'challa and mm-hmm. t'challa came in and sort of was like there's the headmistress because he's like you're here to see the headmistress it was very mm-hmm. very sneakily done but mm-hmm. she said hi to her grandson uh-huh. because she knows her grandson and she had met him before and, she, and that yeah. was of course the thing that she wanted to tell shuri right before uh namor attacked right where she goes beach. i have to tell you something yes. yeah and then namor wonderful. comes in wonderful. interesting yeah. Ah, wonderful. <laughs> i like it yeah and that to me that's just once again the testament that this story is solid and it was just super well thought out and i think that uh yeah this yeah. this movie overall I, I i think i kind of equate it to like daft punk in the way that they make albums they never made an album that was the same as their last project mm. and i think ryan coogler could start that trend of like yeah black panther was this and Wakanda Forever is definitely not that, but I'm going to mm-hmm. present something else and hopefully you enjoy mm-hmm. it. And thinking about all this stuff that you guys are presenting, it, it's a very, very different project than the, than the initial one. And um, I, just hope, I just hope audiences are ready for that because I think a lot of people are coming in expecting to see the same thing again yeah and this you know? is also ryan coogler's as far as i know this is ryan coogler's first sequel that he's ever had to do mm-hmm. and yeah. it's the first sequel like he, was, to do. he was a producer, was a producer on, on a lot too. of stuff yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah but to actually direct and write or co-write um yeah. a sequel so you have that on top of you know chadwick boseman and all that sort of stuff so i think it's 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 a lot of pressure. It's a lot of pressure to yeah, not only sure. write something that you feel really passionate about, but I feel like it's also uh, a really big challenge to deliver something that you really truly believe in that you think is you know kind of firing on all cylinders. But I, I really mm-hmm. do think that he did an amazing job given the circumstances. Absolutely, you know, I, like I I know that we've said the same thing about Furious Seven. In the middle of that <clears throat> production, Paul Walker passed away, but I think what they were able to do and the way they used all their resources to complete the movie, but to also give his character sort of that send off. I'm like, you you probably created like the best case scenario given the mm-hmm. circumstances that you were in. And I feel yeah, like this movie absolutely. does the same thing. And I think it agreed. Like you guys have been saying it, it honors Chadwick it honors T'Challa. It sets up a future where T'Challa can still continue to exist in the yeah, MCU. Sure. So it's, it's a recasting of sorts, but it is also very much yeah. directly connected to Chadwick's black Panther, which I think is so cool. I also yeah, just absolutely. really loved the backstory of of Namor and like even just how he got his name. You know, yeah. we left Yo. the screening and I texted <laughs> yeah. Hector and all I yeah. texted Hector was El Nino Sin Amor. And I was like, this was <laughs> just that one little so thing. And I was good. like, man, what a smart way <laughs> to give this character his name. Yeah. I don't know, how did you guys feel about the history and the way it was represented? Because, you know, that's a history that I'm not super familiar with. So sure, yeah. I don't really have sort of like the historical knowledge and context to see like, how are people going to feel about that? Will they feel like, oh, this did a really nice job sort of taking this real sort of mythology and applying it to a fictional character and making mm-hmm. it feel like we are going to be well represented on screen. I think they did a really good job of it. I'm I'm personally no scholar of Mesoamerican history sure. whatsoever, so right, like sure. I can't right. I can't really speak on like the accuracy and if it'll be accepted well. I think they did a good enough job of presenting it as a backbone for an, a society that can exist underwater. I think they 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 use the mythology appropriately and I think they use the history appropriately to where they acknowledge the colonialism with Spain they acknowledge mm-hmm. the feelings behind those characters like how do you feel how did those characters feel being rushed out of their land by a colonizer and how would that affect their future and their lives and it absolutely it gave Namor Namor his name it gave them a reason to be underwater it gave them a reason to like become the the society that they did so i i feel like it's the perfect blend of like the mesoamerican history and mm-hmm. the the mutants and and the the crazy civilization that we see underwater because it's not mm-hmm. a direct copy of you know, an Incan or Mayan uh, society or an Aztec society. Mm-hmm. It's like a, it's like a, a spinoff, a blend of it. They, they observed it from the water and they were like, okay, cool. This is, this is kind of us. And these are the things that we will take with, these are our traditions. Overall, I think it was treated with respect. I'm just, I'm just going to talk about Ryan Coogler this whole time. It's just hats off to Ryan Coogler for everything that he did because his, his head was in the right place when it comes to inviting us Latinos to the table, like inviting our culture and, and representing us right. Because 
I don't feel like it was done dirty at all. I feel like everything was done very respectfully and appropriately. Uh, I got to get my hats off to Lupita with her Mexican accent, first of all. Oh, my God. And then her, speaking, her, her speaking Spanish, her French. Her, I was her, so impressed, she's man. Brilliant. Everything. Genius. She's, brilliant. Yeah. yeah. I mean, her Lupita accents Nyong'o, all over were good. Reminder, she is Mexican. She yeah. was born in yep. Mexico. And she mm -hmm, has a mm -hmm. Mexican citizenship. So the Mexican yep. delegation is very happy that, and, right? Yeah. And then, you know, yeah. where does she, yeah. where does she build a school in Haiti? It's that in bridge mm -hmm. of that mm -hmm. Afro Latino world. I think yeah. it's all very purposeful. I think it's so, yeah. so beautiful. It's all it's so great. done and very also, much on purpose. Yeah. How sad is it that technically Nakia was the one that drew first blood. She was the first one who killed uh, a, 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 a citizen of Falcon, right? <laughs> right. And, and, exactly. And she was trying to exactly. save her and she's like, yeah. we have right. to go. And yeah. Yeah, we got to go. Were high yeah. And yeah, man, I, I, I'm in agreement with that. I think um, it was wonderful to see Ryan Coogler. He was asked this question and he was he was talking about how like in the comics, typically uh, Namor and um, the Atlantis world is this very like uh, Roman Greco inspired thing. It's very European. Mm -hmm. It's very classical. He goes, but to, to he goes, I knew that uh, we were looking at this and going, how can we increase the sort of representation in the MCU? Mm -hmm. What can we do to add that importance to this kind of to this world and to this character. And he mentioned, he cited, he goes, you know, this sort of thing has been explored in other projects before in other stories to take mm -hmm. the underworld civilization, the lost underworld city, underwater city rather, which is like a super, super old story and myth and yeah. fable in, in human history and to attach it to like a Mesoamerican or like a Latino backdrop. He was mm -hmm. mentioning the Disney movie Atlantis, the lost empire mm -hmm. in interviews. And I was like, Dude, that movie, he goes, he, he he said he loved that movie growing up. And I was like, Dude, that movie's dope. I forgot that Ryan Coogler's our age. Like, of course he knows this <laughs> yeah, movie. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Of course you he know, grew up on that. Um, yeah. <laughs> great, great piece of evidence there that, of, of like this kind of thing being explored before. And um, and I also saw online uh, when the Marvel Twitter account was posting about this version of Namor with the Tenoch Huerta version, like they'd learn more about Namor. And there was like a little video or something. The first mm -hmm. reply I saw on Twitter was this person that was like, they ruined this character. The character Namor literally is Roman uh -huh. backwards. So they ruined it, blah, 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 blah. So when I went, to, so I had this in my head. And then when I saw the movie the first time last, last night and, mm -hmm. Na and Namor says, first of all, the moment where all the Spanish people are like, who's this boy? Who's this niño? And then he like mm -hmm. just flies up into the sky <laughs> and the music. Yeah. I was like, yeah. oh shit, oh, kill all these so people. Good. Kill them. It kill was great. The colonizers, baby. <laughs> and, and when he said, uh, eres un niño sin amor. I, and he mm -hmm. goes, that's where I took my name. Yep. Amor. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh my God. That was a, like, it felt like a direct call Perfect. out to the yeah. type of yeah. like backwards and annoying and racist people that are like, you right, should be right. Roman. They ruined the the comic book character. <laughs> but of course, take no other issue with the translation and adaptation of any other comic book concept, only right. when it comes to the ethnicity and race of a character and a, and a, and a made up one, by the way. It's not like they, it's not like, <laughs> yeah. it's not like it's not a comic thing. was, was yeah. traditionally depicted a certain way that is a real ethnic group. And then they gave it to Mexicans. It's like, right. there's no such thing as Atlanteans. It's all fake mm -hmm. bullshit yeah. made up stuff so <laughs> yeah. that's how i felt as i was also really impressed and i think that there's enough there in talokan to expand in a future project i'm like maybe oh, namor can get percent. his own oh, movie yeah. I mean, hey i want to say this the defenders was the netflix characters the group of characters but traditionally in the comics defenders was also the name of a group that comprised the Hulk, Doctor Strange, Namor, Valkyrie, and the Silver Surfer. All we need is the Silver mm -hmm. Surfer. I'm like, that could be a movie. Mm -hmm. I'd yeah, watch that movie. That Let's rad. go to Talokan yeah. again. Let's do that. Yep. So anyway, yep. there's um a lot to love about the the uh I'll just shout out again to uh to Mabel Cadena who played Namora. She mm -hmm. was awesome. Mm -hmm. And uh, Alex Livinali, who played Atuma. When Atuma showed yeah, up so and basically defeated, cool. <laughs> defeated Okoye. That's how that you know was Okoye is that shit, was man. Great. That's oh that's my how, because, god, yeah. Because they set up, and also earlier in the movie when we first see Okoye and the Dormelage kicked the shit out of those guys that were trying to. It was the like French the soldiers crowd was going yeah, nuts. The French soldiers, so it yeah. Was, it was awesome. So yeah. no better way to introduce a real threat, a real antagonist, than to have the most badass character in the world show up, and then Atuma's able to like go toe to toe with Okoya. You mm -hmm. go, dude, this mm -hmm. Atuma guy's like this guy's this guy's a real deal. It was awesome when <laughs> yeah. he punched yeah. Mbaku. It was, it was good. No, when Namor punched Mbaku, boom! I was Broke I was his his arm chest. Chest. Was gonna get like for real, for real hurt. I'm like, no, yeah. don't kill off Mbaku. Don't do that. Yeah, I was like, please <laughs> yeah, God, yeah. don't. That, 
<laughs> you cannot awesome. do another yeah. death. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah, I, I want to give a huge shout out to Denai mm, Guerrera be, because she was like emotionally, she was so good. Mm -hmm. She brought mm -hmm. so yes. much depth, but also she was so funny. Yeah, so yes. funny. And like her yeah, her comedic timing in certain moments when when uh, Riri walks in the bathroom and she walks out and then she starts oh. like talking about her makeup. She's like, I told you, mm -hmm. I told you. Why, why didn't you? I was just like, this is so funny. And yeah, I think that's, great, that's another great. thing that the movie does really, really well. It balances the tone. Primarily, it's like a dr it's a drama primarily. Yeah. But it uses comedy in perfect moments to kind of like allow mm -hmm. you to take a breath you to just kind of like bit. relieve mm -hmm. yourself a little bit from mm -hmm. sort of the stress and the anxiety or just like how high stakes the movie can be sometimes mm -hmm. and that's the mm -hmm. other thing too i really i was kind of surprised by this by how much the movie made me constantly question is this character going to make it out of this movie alive mm -hmm. yeah you know yeah. the stuff with umbaku even okoye and and nakia i was like you know i didn't know about the kid thing until after obviously I, I felt very uncertain yeah. what characters are potentially going to make it out of this film. My hope yep. was that all of the main characters would make it out. But Queen Ramonda was like one that I wasn't expecting. Yeah. And, you that know, was yeah. A I'm, huge I'm bummed shocker. because Ang yeah. Angela Bassett is so good, but I, I you know. know, but I understand what it does for the character, especially Shuri, what it does to her. Um, yeah. She can yeah, always so, be in the ancestral plane. She can be in the exactly. ancestral plane. And, she, exactly. and she, will exactly. yeah. she will be. Yeah. She yeah. will be. She's yeah. there. Yeah. So it's just going to say just in the future with Namor. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, mm -hmm. Augustine and I watching these fights and being like, no, but like it's a bunch of Mexican people and we love <laughs> Namor and we yeah. know that he's like yeah. a heroic person. He's on the Avengers. He's in the Illuminati. He's on the Defenders. Like he he has gone to war with the surface world, but he's ultimately, generally speaking, a good guy. This mm -hmm. movie, this first installment of his, he's wearing his classic green trunks. I think going forward, he's going to have more of like the black, sleek kind of like bodysuit mm -hmm. thing that he has and a little bit more maybe regal or whatever. I think this movie is the version of Namor that is calling back to like his initial appearances in comics from the Golden Age, from World War II, where he was straight mm -hmm. up a villain. He was straight yeah. up throwing fucking submarines at the surface world and being like, stay out of our ocean, <laughs> like killing people. Yeah. Like, you know, it wasn't until... The Nazis uh, uh, um, in the comic books, but in, in in real life, that Marvel was like, let's have Captain America team up with Namor and the Human Torch, and they're just going to go kill a bunch of Nazis and fight Nazis, mm -hmm. which was very interesting politically for them to do, and and it was awesome. So I think this first one is like that. I mean, his it, dude, the first appearance of the Atlanteans when they're killing all those guys on the on the on the rig or whatever, mm -hmm. and then Namor grabs this, the helicopter and kills like Lake Bell, like kills those characters, <laughs> and he's just standing in. Yeah. he was standing like a vengeful god like it's kind yeah. of like a that was terrifying <laughs> Flat and ass, it yeah. should be it yeah. was it was scary <laughs> but i think i think going forward he's going to be a, a marvel character that will have an arc and that you know maybe the atlanteans will want to continue to especially atuma he's always like a mm -hmm. bad guy continue to want to war with the surface surface world but he's going to mm -hmm. get to know other characters and be like no 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 some of them are good so I'm not going to go yeah. to war with the surface world. I'm going to take care yeah. of my own people and and do just wait till he meets Susan Storm, the Invisible Woman. Woo She's going to have a thing for him. The tension. It's going to be great. The sexual tension. Oh. Woo. <laughs> great. Anyway, yeah, I can't wait. <sighs> of course. Yeah. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. What do you think about Black Panther Wakanda forever? Where do you think some of the characters could go? Some of the arcs could go? Where do you think the Talokan people could go and Namor? What, where do you think he could pop up next? Let us know all your thoughts and theories. Also, your overall thoughts on Phase 4, since this is the concluding film or concluding story in this phase. How did you feel overall about Phase 4? Let us know all of your thoughts. Mm -hmm. Subscribe if you haven't already. Check out our Patreon for a bunch of uncut reactions, and we'll see you in the next review. Bye!